So this week, actually, I'm going to hold it on my hand like most people on TikTok do. It's a lavalier. It's meant to be on your shirt, but people always hold it. So when in Rome, going to talk about what Table Moments is. A lot of you guys who are following us don't even know, like, it's a podcast. This is a whole podcast. There's, yeah, I have these clips that I post almost every day, but the topics that I actually post are things that we've talked about on the podcast, usually that week. So if you're interested in nuance for a lot of the things that I talk about on the podcast, definitely the way to do it is <laughs> you listen to our podcast. You can find it on any podcasting app. Just search Table Moments. We have 95 episodes so far. We've been doing this for a while. So it's pretty cool. Um, so we'll talk about, I'll describe table moments, the ideation of that, who I am, Moni, you guys don't know who that, who I am, and I don't bother mentioning it in videos either. Also, I'll be talking about the name, why we call it table moments, and the reason behind that. Also, how we structure the show, and maybe briefly about the podcast and why I do it. But then, really, the, the main focus of this discussion is to talk about the problems with dating apps. Dating apps suck, okay? They really do. And you'll be surprised about like who owns these apps. You'll be really surprised. In fact, there's one company that owns a lot of the ones that people are active on. So I'll talk about the problems of dating apps and the issues with it. And then, and then also talk about building a better app. I have an idea of how to do this. And it wouldn't require that much development time either. It would just be building on top of Instagram. I'll explain that. I do have a video on this page specific to <laughs> this new dating app that I think I could design. But if you want to check it out, you could check it out on the this, the table on this page we have. Uh, I have a, I, I put together a video explaining a new, better app that could exist. If enough people are interested, I will build it. I will build it. And it wouldn't be too hard to build. Uh, and then do Q&As. And also, if you guys have any comments... <laughs> to share about either dating apps or your experience on them or what a new dating app, if there was one to exist, what it should include. Feel free to leave it in the comments as I talk about it or just save it for the end. I don't expect this to take more than 30 minutes. Um, it's my first live on TikTok, so really just testing it out, see how it goes. Hey, Chris. Mommy. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> All right, so briefly, what is Table Moments? Table Moments is a podcast I do with my brother, and then sometimes we invite a guest, and we talk about random crazy ideas. We talk about the kind of things you guys talk about with your friends, like over dinner or when you guys go to Denny's late at night or at a bar when you guys are just chilling. Those are the kind of conversations we have, and we record it. Uh, we record this virtually because we are in separate parts of the country, but we talk about anything and everything except no politics uh, because a lot of people just aren't political. And so we talk about all the crazy ideas that, you know, guys have even, I guess, I don't even know, like groups of women, if they have crazy ideas like um, building a new app for dating or whatever. But those are the kind of conversations we have. They're just random and they're timeless, too. So you can jump into any episode of the Table Moments podcast and enjoy it as long as you can enjoy just a group of friends and guests talk about random crazy ideas. So that's table moments. And the reason why we call it table moments is because it's a term that we coined as kids where, you know, you'd huddle around with your friends, usually after like lunch or dinner or something, or maybe over drinks. And you guys just start talking about random stuff and you just start laughing your asses off. We are more than friends, Chris. I believe that, too. We are. <laughs> and so that's and, and then we coined the term table moments every time where we would just be laughing our asses off late at night and. We coined the term table moments and I figured a couple of years ago when we started this that we would uh, we should start a podcast because I thought it was pretty hilarious. Started this with my siblings um, and now we just invite guests on who either have some space or expertise in something. We've had a rapper on, we've had a TikTok star on. Eventually, I'd like to get even like crazier guests on like an OnlyFans model to talk about um, the psychology behind OnlyFans and some of the issues they deal with because that's one of the topics we've discussed on the podcast. Um, which I might even bring up on one of these lives one day because I'm building an app, <laughs> a social media app that I'm targeting towards OnlyFans models because I think it would really speed up their workflow for all the content that they have to post. So um, I'm definitely going to get a lot of experience with that soon <laughs> and I'll be talking about it on here. But that's Table Moments. That's, and I'm Ayman. 
that's my name, but that doesn't matter. And so that's table notes. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave it in there. But let's get into the first topic, the problem with dating apps. Dating apps are pretty crap these days. Um, their entire business model depends on exploiting men <laughs> for giving them the false hope of connection. And so a lot of guys end up, uh, they end up like paying for like these apps to get access to more women. But here's the problem. Like if you're not the kind of guy who can attract like women on a regular basis, even just in real life, then an app like that won't help you, but they won't tell you that they'll take your money. They'll take your money and give you the false hope of possibly matching with somebody and also the rampant use of bots on a lot of these platforms. They have a financial incentive to keep guys on there and they'll they'll string you along for a long time if they would because as long as you're on there, they're making money. And in addition, they make their money. Their product are women matching women with men. And so women, I don't know if you guys realize this, but you're being commoditized. And then also, as soon as you pay for premium on any of these dating apps, like Chris, yeah, as soon as you pay for for a dating app, now you're a paying customer. And so now they're going to throttle the reach that you get because you've proven that you pay for stuff. And that's how they make their money. And so this whole business model is counter to what people actually are looking for, right? It's not, they have no incentive to actually pair you up with somebody and for a lot of guys, they're just looking for companionship, even long term, um, which I think is lost on a lot of uh, on, on a lot of people. They don't realize like most people just want one person. That's very, very common. But the apps don't have you don't have an incentive to actually make that happen. And so as long as they keep you on there, they get money. And so even if they say stupid things like hinge especially i learned something's pretty interesting about it today which i'll bring up but the app that's meant to be deleted bs like are you serious if if people delete your app then you're not a paying customer anymore and then you have no reason to be there and and then how do they make their money so always follow the money that's a really really important thing and so these apps don't have an incentive to to actually bring people together turns out most of these dating apps that you guys are on are actually owned by one company. I don't know if you guys know this, The Match Group. Uh, they have a $13.39 billion market cap. They actually own, get this, they own Tinder, they own Match, they own Hinge, which I didn't know before I looked this up. So The Match Group actually owns Hinge. They own OkCupid, Pears, Plenty of Fish, which I don't even know if people still use that, and then Our Time, which I think is for like older people. So they own everything, basically. Bumble does its own thing. So shout out to Whitney Hurd, the CEO who founded that company. But even then, I have some disagreements about how Bumble operates, considering like you're really expecting women to make the first move. Like, come on. Like, come on. <laughs> like, women are deathly afraid of rejection. In fact, in my profile, my Bumble profile, I actually say, uh, just say hi. I'll take it from there. And that works really well. So guys, if you if you're wondering why girls aren't like actually that you match with aren't actually responding or saying anything, just put that in there and take the responsibility and agency away from them and you should get more responses from them. But yeah, like a lot of these apps are owned by one company. And so the idea that anyone can find love on an app like that is kind of crazy because they're they have no incentive to do so. So what do we do? Can we change things? And on one of the podcasts, I think last week, my brother and I, we talk about Instagram and how it's, I guess, used as a dating app these days. The The way people use it is, I guess, you follow somebody that you think looks good. <laughs> so I guess you're just going off a profile picture or something, especially if they have like a private account. You're just going off of their, their avatar. Then you follow them. Then you like two or three pictures of theirs. And then you and then you shoot your shot. That's apparently how w women and men date on Instagram. And so this whole this comp this whole complicated thing just to like meet somebody. But here's the problem: you don't even know if they're in your area. So, and usually you're just shooting a shot at a friend of a friend. So that kind of limits your circle, or you're just gonna have to follow a bunch of people. But there's a lot of limitations with just doing it this way. Just one, it's onerous having to 
follow people. And so it could take days, maybe even weeks for something to actually happen between two people on Instagram. And so you can easily, easily build an app on top of it. I have some experience with using Instagram's backend software tools. And I think I could build an app on top of it where you basically just log in with your Instagram account and then share your location and then it'll start pairing you up with people in your area and you and pull the images directly from Instagram so you don't even have to like upload or anything. And I haven't quite figured out how the matching algorithm will work. My, my thinking is men would have to make the first move. So yeah, guys, learn to get the courage to ask a girl out. But it would be cool on the man's side if I included things like openers, which aren't, right, you could just say hi. If a girl likes you, if she likes your pictures, you can say whatever you want. She's going to be into it. See, this is the thing. Like, it's not about being clever when you're asking a girl out. Just be attractive. And and it doesn't mean just physically. It could be attitude, too. So that aloofness, that bit of an asshole, but also with a sweet side, you know, kind of thing. If you know what I'm talking about, you could do that. And so it'd be cool if I could put some openers in there. But even better would be if I could suggest places to meet. So low, low, so places where you can actually have a first date. So think like uh, something that's that's easy to do. That's that isn't so such a big deal, like a coffee shop or a tea shop or maybe like a boba spot or nothing like dinner or anything where you're going to have to invest a lot of money into a girl, you know, something that's very, very cheap. <laughs> that's my that's my philosophy on first dates. It's like we're just getting to know each other. I don't know you. We're going to keep this as light and as simple and low key as possible. And if we vibe after that, then second date, we could do more if you're feeling the energy. But till then, it's just a simple first date. And so you can make money by suggesting spots and the businesses actually pay for having their spot suggested. So like a local coffee shop that's open um, at a later time when people would typically date or like a cool dessert spot, ice cream shop, whatever, where you can meet a girl. Um, and then that's how the app would make money. It doesn't make app money directly from the users. And so you can pull that like disincentive away from like having to keep people on the platform. Now, even then, that's not perfect either, because still you need people going out on dates in order to make money and advertise businesses. But that's just one way. Another thing is that guys struggle with is actually getting matches in the first place, which if you're a guy who gets matches, you don't understand that some guys don't get matches at all. And for those people you have to fix you have to fix something in your life the reason why you're not getting matches and so it's either your your body so you're not fit your mind so you just don't have the right mentality so you come off as like not in the right way to a girl money it could be that you're not confident in the way your ability to provide and so you got to fix that and then also it could just be being comfortable socially so what women do desire is a man who can navigate social situations and that's really where game comes in and it's not like you have to learn pick up lines and all that no it's just about being relaxed and open and honest and then also being uh fun to be around and so it's one of those four things it could be multiple of those four things oh and the last one would be pictures like obviously it's an online platform if you have bad pictures they're judging you on those pictures guys <laughs> like they are you got to be able to take good pictures of yourselves fellas and here's the thing Men are so bad, so bad at taking selfies. Even me, I, I I hate taking selfies. I don't do it. But I think someone wrote a study or did a study on analyzing a bunch of pictures that men take and and women take. And they found that the most appealing pictures for men are ones where they're looking away from the camera. So if you're looking directly at the camera, it's not as attractive as actually looking away. Also better, even better than that would be a candid photo. So someone taking a picture of you doing something interesting would be the best pictures that you could take. But how often are you in a situation where you're with your boys and they're like, hey, yo, bro, take a picture of me, man. Just take a picture of me. It's like that doesn't happen typically. It's a it's an awkward thing that men have with each other. But I think we got to get over that if we're going to be able to like fully represent ourselves on online which is becoming a bigger and bigger part of our representation to the world, our online presence. So fix your pictures. This whole idea that 
women find the average man unattractive, I think might be BS. If you consider that their study of this was based on dating accounts. So I think it was OkCupid that did a study of this and they found like <clears throat> where average men and average women lie, uh, how how appealing they were to the opposite gender. This is obviously just heterosexual couples and situations. I, I, I couldn't tell you what it's like for the LGBT space, but for for men and women finding what type of man or woman is attractive based on the OkCupid okay study, which is a hard thing to find these days because it revealed some truths that people are not comfortable with, is that the average man isn't attractive to the average woman. But if you consider that it's based on photos that people took or posted on their dating apps, and we know men are terrible at taking selfies, okay? We don't understand lighting. We don't understand angles. We don't understand filters. Like, we're very bad. Even this, like, this this took me a while to just set up. I'm like, where does the light, where should it be? And I'm sure if I, like, consulted a girl, she would tell me a better way to do it. But that's the problem. Like, men are not taking good pictures. And so when the average woman finds the average man unattractive, it could just be our photo taking skills. Because, like, if you've been on a lot of online dates, uh, a lot of dates from matching with women online, you'll realize women never look as good as they do in their pictures. Expect a one to two point drop when you meet her in person, fellas. That's a fact. I think everybody knows that. And that's another thing that we've talked about on the podcast at length how good women are at making themselves look way better than they are in reality. And so that's one of the things you're going to probably have to fix. And it would be cool if we could add like a, for this new dating app, add a photography service that can actually help guys take better pictures when they're on these dating apps. Cause like you guys don't know what you're doing with these cameras, man. And so that's one way to make money. Another way to make money is obviously like, affiliates with businesses. So here are good places to actually meet girls for a first date. And then also one thing we could do is mindset courses. So another thing, a lot of guys just don't are not confident in themselves, which maybe comes from circumstances. Maybe it comes from people around you who have just been super negative. But one of the things you could do and offer on a new dating app like this is helping men fix their minds. And so it would be like a mindset course or something to like, or even like therapy courses, I guess, or like a therapy service to help men overcome some of the trauma they've been through, I guess, to really fix their mind so that they're more confident when they go out on a date. Um, so, and then also another issue or hang up could be your body. Like if you don't have a fit body, yeah, a lot of women aren't going to find you attractive. It sucks. It's like, no, they're not going to accept you for you guys. That's just not, this doesn't work for you guys. No, that's not how it works. So you got to be fit. And so we can include things like affiliates with gym memberships. It would be really cool if I could get Planet Fitness on there. The one thing I like about Planet Fitness is that they're everywhere. So literally you could offer this to people who sign up for the app and you make your money as long as it's like, hey, you're not getting any matches. You're probably not fit. So Here's a workout program. Maybe you can partner with trainers too who can actually put together plans for people and they can make money that way or bring them on and uh, they can offer their services or even like the gym membership discount to Planet Fitness. So anyone in the country, at least this is for US-based people, to, to actually fix their bodies. And so you fix your body, you fix your mind, and then the money thing. So if you're not confident in your ability to provide, it actually reflects in your personality and girls, yeah, they are very good at detecting um, insecurities in men. It might not seem like it, but they are. So you got to fix those things. And if one of the things you're insecure about is your ability to provide and the money you have in your bank account, you got to fix that. And so that's another thing we can offer, like uh, courses and ways or even training to help you earn more. And that's another way to make money. And so, yeah, you're still making money from men, but in a way, a positive way when you, you build this new dating app. So you just offer all these tools that actually appeal and make men better. So, And it's also good for women, too, because either the people on the app already meet those five things. So they either have a fit body, good mindset, good financially, good pictures, um, 
they have those things and those are the the people you can pick from or the men who aren't getting matches will become those things as they go through this process of self-improvement so it's really just a self-improvement app that's disguised as a dating app and i think that would be something really cool and useful for men and still make money at the same time like this idea that the business and business does not have to be contrary to the benefits of people okay it doesn't I know we're surrounded by examples of where they are contrary to each other and businesses rely on exploiting people, but that doesn't have to be the case. It doesn't have to be the case, especially with this like dating stuff. And it would be really cool to screw over the match group by like <laughs> putting all their apps out of business by offering this. And the app would be free. I think it makes sense for the app to be free. I'd have to do something about spam or bots because anytime you make anything on the internet free, it encourages that kind of spot. Uh, spam and bot behavior which is why you get a bunch of spam email all the time because the cost of actually sending an email is zero but so I might charge like 10 cents or something to just join and that's it and that would be cost prohibitive enough to keep any people from creating bots that would like exploit people and whatever and so I think that would be a pretty cool dating app. And then two, I wouldn't have to even like build a bunch of infrastructure for that. Literally, it would just be built on top of Instagram in a way that helps men and helps women. And I don't know. I think that would be really cool. So uh, people seem to really mess, really, I'm trying not to curse on this thing. So people really resonated with this idea. So I think it'd be really cool if I built this app. I might just build a prototype and see how it goes. Oh, and one of the problems with building a new dating app is getting users. And obviously the users that are more important to get are actually women because no, if <laughs> getting a bunch of men and then it's just a sausage fest and it's like, it's not useful. So <laughs> how do you get women? The cool thing about Instagram's backend software and they call them APIs is that I, a lot of anyone with a public account, I could basically make an account on this dating app automatically. Because their their pictures are public, so literally I could do that, and then and then as guys, you know, des decide that they're interested in this girl, let's say an example of a particular girl, then I could just DM her, or the app could DM her and say, hey, there's all these guys interested. Oh, and that's another element of this dating app, this new dating app based on Instagram. It would actually all the conversations would actually happen in Instagram. So as soon as you guys match or whatever the matching algorithm is, I haven't quite figured out that part of it yet, but whatever that is, once you guys match, then the app will give you like tips on how to open a conversation and then also give you suggestions about where to meet up if you guys vibe. But the chat doesn't happen in the app. It happens in Instagram. And that's a really important note, which might not seem like it's important, but since I'm building on top of Instagram, I have to incentivize Instagram to let this app exist. And in order for the that to happen i have to have activity happen on instagram itself plus i won't have to build the chat portion so literally you would just hit a link it would automatically create a link directly to her dms and then you just start chatting with her literally like like what happens now except without the having to follow each other then like three pictures then wait for her to respond just before you guys even start dming this is just straight like you guys match dm her right away guys and that's it that's that's the app and then so hopefully <laughs> structuring it this way, Instagram doesn't ban the app because you, if you're going to build on top of anybody else's platform, you essentially need their permission. Literally, there's like a there's a portal where you actually get some like specific codes to use in your app. And if I don't send people or increase the activity on Instagram for this app, then they don't have an incentive for this to exist. And so then then like because I'm pulling people away from the app, which wouldn't be a good thing in terms of like the incentives of the platform itself. So I'm thinking about that, too. What's good for the platform? What's good for people? What's good for men? What's good for women? And I think something like this would be really cool. So that's my idea for for this app. And I've been thinking about it a lot lately. I'm still working on how matching would work because I think women are far more selective than men are. So I think men would have to swipe would have the ability to swipe on any woman but then women you only get this the suit as soon as you match with one guy that's the only guy you can talk to until that doesn't work out and i think someone in one of the videos i made on this TikTok explaining this idea they mentioned like 
uh, there should be a time limit on it. So like within 24 hours, if you don't leave a significant comment or reply, then you, then the match breaks and the girls banned, or at least temporarily, um, ha removes access temporarily until some fulfilling something or whatever, just so you don't get a bunch of time wasters is like you often run into on these dating apps. So that's the idea. And I'm still thinking about it. Um, I have an idea of how to build it technically. It's just a matter of, is there enough interest out there for people to actually want to use an app like this and, and then making money in a different way than just making it money directly from the users. And because of the way I've structured it, it wouldn't cost much to run the app either. So I could afford to give it, let people use it for free. So that's my plan to change the dating scene. <laughs> I've always been an ambitious guy. <laughs> so that's, that's something I'm really been giving a lot of thought on, but until then I'm working on this other project that I'm going to be wrapping up soon. So that's the live for today. Thank you for showing up. Uh, appreciate you, Chris, for leaving a comment uh, about Pumble. And I might do this as, on a, as a weekly thing, just going into depth some of the topics I bring up on the podcast. Like this week, we talked about, which is going to be published next week, we talked about um, mindset and ambitious people and what sets them apart from everybody else and how it looks crazy what they're doing to people who don't have ambition in their life. And so we, my brother and I, we get deep into this. He's doing his own entrepreneur, entrepreneurial thing. I'm doing my own entrepreneurial thing in two entirely different spaces, but our mindset's the same about seeing deep into the future. Um, and when you think about 10 years, five, 10 years from now, what you're doing now is going to look crazy to people who don't see past next month. And so we, we go deep into that. Um, and then we also talk about like sort of the imposter syndrome kind of thing, going to college and not being sure about some of the things that we study, like engineering or whatever, or just being able to accomplish things that we look crazy to other people. But, but when you have confidence in yourself, it's not a crazy thing to do. So that's the live. Thank you for all the people who showed up. Um, let's see who you are. William, shout out to you, bro. Um, thank you for sticking around. I appreciate it. And I think I'm going to do this weekly. If you guys like it, leave a comment, I guess. I don't even, I still figuring out this TikTok thing, but otherwise, yeah, really appreciate you guys being here. Bye.